You've asked me about the main challenge to legal education in the 21st century. Uh, I can't really speak about that as a global phenomenon. I can speak about it in the United States. And the first thing I would say is legal education in the United States is a highly um, diversified affair. There are, there are many forms of legal education that serve many different functions within the United States. And uh, at the present, we're facing a crisis with our with a certain kind of law school uh, in which a persons go to law school and they have to take debts and they don't face the prospect of employment in the law in a way that can repay the debts. So what that means is we're training people to become lawyers, but there isn't a market that can sustain the work as lawyers capable of um, supporting the legal education at the price at which we give it. Now, the way this has been portrayed in the press is that it's a crisis of the oversupply of lawyers. We have, and the press tends to say we have unscrupulous law schools who are churning out lawyers, but there's really nothing for them to do since they can't make a living. I would like myself to turn around the problem and to say if you actually analyze the country, what you will find is a drastic undersupply of lawyers. What you actually find is huge swaths of the population that have no access to justice, that have no access to courts, that have no access to basic civil liberties and civil rights because they lack lawyers. And what that tells me is that we have a market problem in the United States about the way we supply justice, about the way we apportion the right to have a lawyer, the ability to have a lawyer. So instead of thinking about this merely as a crisis of certain law schools whose graduates can't uh, be hired by firms that pay a high salary, I prefer to think about this as a crisis in the relationship between the production of lawyers, which is legal education, and the supply of justice, which is something that the whole society has to be concerned with. They are out of alignment now. And that means that the terms of your question may be uh, too blinkered, too narrow. The real question, I think, is how should our society in the 21st century provide access to four people to legal rights and the ways in which legal education will respond to that will depend upon the ways in which our society reforms its practices of access to justice and that is a major challenge it seems to me for the 21st century. I think uh, um, what we as law schools need to do is to produce uh, students who are competent at the practice of law and who are dedicated to the practice of law, and who see the practice of law as part of the larger betterment of society, not merely as a, as a vehicle for personal gain, but as uh, performing social services, and they should be imbued uh, with the spirit that they are performing a public function when they practice law. So they have to meet the market halfway. I think that's a very important thing for uh, law schools. That won't be true for every student. Different schools, uh, different students will go to different schools for different reasons. It's not a regimented matter, but it's extremely important that they learn their public responsibilities when they are at law school. Um, I don't know if I put this uh, in terms of the phenomena of new emerging large economic powers, but I can tell you autobiographically. Uh, I'm a constitutional lawyer. I write a lot about the First Amendment. And uh, I never studied much comparative law. That would say 20 years ago. Now, if I do my subject and I don't do it comparatively, I don't feel like I know my subject. And that is not to say that I have to study Chinese law, but I have to study how, how my subject is unfolding in different countries. So uh, the phenomenon of the legal has gone international. Now, I think this poses very interesting problems for law schools. Um, and here I'm going to broaden my focus from the United States. I would say legal education throughout most of the world is a matter of learning what the law is. So if I go to France and I'm watching a class about studying law, I'm watching students learning what's in the code. That's the essence of legal education. Uh, in the United States, in the 1880s, when legal education began to become more formalized, it wasn't simply a matter of becoming an apprentice in somebody's uh, uh, law practice. Uh, the question of learning what the law is 
became very quickly uh, understood to be uh, an unanswerable question. You had innumerable states, you had federal law, you had state law, you had city law, and all of this was in the constant of, con a process of constant motion. And that meant it was a meaningless question to say, what is the law? The law will be different when you turn around. It will be different if you're in Montana or Idaho or, or California. So um, when American legal education began to think about how to structure legal education, they did not adopt European models about studying the code, understanding the content as if the law were one thing, it was what was in the code book. They instead began to think about how the processes of law and they understood how the law works to be the object of legal education and not the specific content of the law. That's one of the reasons why legal realism is so important in the United States, because legal realism is simply the theoretical implication of that way of educating lawyers. Um, I think the process of globalization and the, 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 the increase, the exponential increase of transnational law um, poses the same problem internationally. If you're in France now and you want to study what French law is, you can't just look at the code. You have to look at the decisions of Strasbourg and you look at the decisions of the ECJ and you have to understand all of the transnational uh, treaties of which France is a part and so forth and so on. So I think that as legal education throughout the globe begins to respond to the fact that law is no longer, can no longer be encapsulated in a single text, that law is no longer even well understood as simply text, that will completely change the way legal education works throughout the world, and it will have to move more toward the American model. Thank you very much, Bethel. Very helpful. Thank you. Very good. <laughs>